Hello and welcome to Thursday Bible School, online Bible school. Father, we lift these people up in Jesus' name, that the eyes of their understanding are enlightened, the eyes of my understanding are enlightened, and we know what the hope of our calling is and exceedingly great power that works on the inside of us. Amen. We're going to jump right into the Word of God. We're going to give you, we're going to let you think about this. Because it, sometimes it, 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 you have to think about it with, like I prayed that prayer, uh, that your eyes of your understanding will be enlightened with the Bible says to meditate on the Word. So this, will, this, will, this teaching will just totally set you free in every area of life. And we're going to talk about uh, connect or condemn. We're going to talk about condemn, which that's the devil's job. And we're going to talk about conviction, which that's jo uh, God's job. Okay, so the scripture says that condemning is like condemnation. You know, like uh, guilt, anxiety, worry, all that kind of stuff. Now you're over on the condemning side of life when you do that. And you just, you, I don't care what you say or what you do. It's stuff's just not going to work because you're on the wrong side of life. Where human beings are not even made to do stress. That's why we don't deal with. That's why we don't do a good job when we, when we let when we allow it into our life. So what you have to do is that when the light shines on you about these subjects connected to faith, then you're going to see the difference. Is where I'm at. Am I can am I over on the condemning side? And you can, you can, another way you can tell if you're on the condemning side, are you condemning yourself? Are you condemning others? Hello? Or are you, uh, uh, you know, you're putting unnecessary pressure in a condemning way, trying to hope people would change? Well, that's not God. That's, that's, not, that's not witnessing. That's not preaching the gospel. That's God's got nothing to do with the condemning. So, well, if I could just show them that they're wrong, well, good luck, <laughs> because it won't take any faith to do that. So what you have to do is you have to realize, wait a minute, am I condemning myself or condemning other or condemning other places? So if it is, then we're on the condemning side, and God's not into that. Uh, condemning or condemnation, that's a disconnect. Condemning is disconnecting. Uh, the anointing is gone. The <laughs> encouragement is gone. Everything is gone. So that's a condemning. And the Bible warns against it. In Romans 8.1, if you have a Bible, Romans 8.1 said, There is now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So where are we at? We're in Christ Jesus. We didn't get there by getting condemned about ourselves or uh, anything else. No, we didn't get there that way. We got there because we're in Christ now. We even we invited Jesus Christ in and what did he do? Just come in there and start condemning everything, trying to change everything? No. He didn't do that. You know he did. He still doesn't do that. So we gotta watch that. We can't get over because that's a dark side of life. If we condemn it ourselves or person, place or thing or anything like that we get over the condemning side. We don't want to do that. So we could catch ourselves. Well, why would you not want to do that? Because your faith won't work. Hello? So, so we want to please God and stay on the what side of life? Over in the uh, conviction. Now, conviction, we're, we're going to see the two here. Conviction is God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus. Conviction is convincing us you see that not condemning us conviction is a good thing conviction means that they they are uh, convincing us to do what to stay in faith see because the enemy tries to get in there any way he can and if he can if, if we are condemning ourselves or person place or thing now, I know you got to say a little bit of something about praying or something, and, and but people's, uh, you know, we're not condemning them to hell. You know, we're not doing that. And so 
or even ourself. See, condemnation comes is a disconnect. Get that. Let that settle in. And then con con conviction is to convince. See? Convince. It's just like you're getting ready to get born again and the Lord starts dealing with you. Uh, somebody's preaching the gospel and you look at it and listen to it where there's a convincing, a conviction. See, and when that happens, we flow with getting born again, salvation. Okay, so let's look at some scriptures about condemning. Romans 8.1, it says, There's now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Condemnation is condemning. Okay? In John 3.17, it said, Jesus did, God did not send Jesus here to condemn. See that? You can't get any clearer than that. And then in uh, 1 John 3.20, and you can read all the way through 22, it says, Even if you have feelings of guilt, now the guilt's not coming from God, Condemnation is not coming from God, and the condemning is not coming from God. First John three twenty through twenty two. Even if you have feelings of guilt, God is greater than your feelings of guilt. See, so He's not giving you guilt, and then now you turn to Him, and He's greater than your guilt. No, He's not using guilt. He's not using condemnation. No, it's conviction. You heard someone say, "You don't." Uh, I've never heard anybody teach on this. God just dropped it in me in the last three days, and so but I started looking it up. I'm like, "Ah, that's that's can conviction bring? It leads you to freedom. See, conviction is saying, "Hey, you can make it. You can do it. You can go this way. You can participate with salvation." Okay. So conviction <clears throat> leads us into times of refreshing in the presence of God. The word repent in Acts 3.20 is actually where you get a can you change your mind, repent. Uh, one version says you are convicted, not not con not convicted like condemnation, but you're under conviction, and that's a good thing. Because it leads you to salvation. Now, condemnation, on the other hand, is of the devil. So you can give your mind to God. You can give your mind to the devil. <laughs> See, uh, you can give your mind to other stuff. But you can give your mind, condemnation is of the devil. You can give your mind to the devil. Or you can give your mind to God. When you give your mind to God, then that's where the conviction comes. And he's always going to encourage you to, to, hey, you can do this. You can, you can get this done. You can give your mind to the devil. Is how you going to give your mind to the devil? Doubt. I mean, when you doubt, you're actually saying, God, now you're a liar and you, the Scriptures aren't true and I'm not going to do it. That's, that's, you can pray all you want to, God, do something about this doubt. But you're the one that has, has given your mind to the devil <laughs> in doubt and you've got to catch that. Said no, 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 no. That's that's not even my real thoughts. Cause see, we don't think that way. That's not even the real you. The real you would simply say, "Ha, ha, ha!" I know we got it. Doesn't matter. So that's where we're at with give your mind to God, give your mind to the devil, or you can give your mind to God, your thoughts. See, and said no, I'm in faith. That's just the enemy trying to attack me. See, he attacks you in your thoughts. He don't just walk up in a red suit to pitchfork and say, Hey, I'm the devil. I'm going to get you now. He don't do that. He still what he does is he says, Hey, I'm God. And you know what? You didn't do right. And you know what? You can't do this. And you know what? You can't, you're never going to grow past this. You know what? I'm God. And, you know, just be a good religious little girl, a good religious little boy. But, you know, don't, don't be saying that you, you know, that you got that. Don't be saying that, that you're healed. Don't be, you know, it, it's a, one of these days God might heal you. I might heal you. I mean, I might heal you. That's, that's the devil. See? A lot of people, they st they st they're living in hope. Well, actually, you could say they're drowning in hope because 
when faith, because because faith, because hope is just a stepping stone to enter into faith. See, if you're still praying, the, there's no in the Bible that says pray the prayers of hope. I had a lady one time, Minnesota, is up there preaching, and she called me at the place I was staying at. She said, let me talk to Pastor Mike. And I said, okay. So she talked to me. She said, now, you said we're not supposed to pray the prayer of hope. I said, no, you're not supposed to try to live there. It's a stepping stone to enter into faith. She said, well, I found some scriptures in the Old Testament and Psalms and Proverbs that say you're supposed to pray the prayer of hope. I said, well, give me chapter and verse and I'll look it up and read it with you. There wasn't any in there. So then she realized, well, I guess I was just dreaming that up because I've been praying the prayers of hope all the time. I said, hope is not bad. It's not bad. But when somebody comes along and says, hey, what is hope for? Hope is just an exit to get you on the main road. So you have to have hope or you never get on the main road. But you're not supposed to back up in traffic and get back up on exit again. No, you're supposed to keep flowing with faith. Amen. So the exit is connected to that main road too, all through your life. So people don't, don't think that hope is bad because it's not. But you got to remember something. Something that's good can become something bad if you're supposed to be doing something else. So something good, maybe you're used to just praying the prayer of hope, which is good, but now someone come along and send a little bit more light of the word, take a stepping stone, be convicted, be a, be a, be a conviction of God about it. What's he doing? He's just bringing you into more light. See, he's just bringing you into more light. So it's all right to be under conviction about that because that's a good thing. Conviction. So the time, uh, Acts twenty, Acts uh, three twenty, uh, you give your mind, you give your life over to God. So conviction always leads to life. When the conviction, convicting power of God, I got convicted. It's good. The Bible's good. Convicted always leads to life, and peace, and a real change. See. What is that that's saying, you know what, go ahead and read the Bible. Turn the light on, put your flashlight on, whatever you got to do, open your phone, download the Bible. What's, well, that's God. What's He doing? That's a conviction. See, I have a conviction. When the enemy says something, I have a conviction. God is good. Ha, 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 God is good. What are you doing? You're actually praying. I know it doesn't sound religious, but it's what the Bible says to pray about. So, conviction, godly conviction, is of God. Condemnation is not. Conviction is of God. Always leads to life and peace and real change. I was up in Minnesota, and we went to this church, and we had uh, meetings in the library there, the public library. And the pastor and a lot of different ones was coming from that church. And uh, he said, well, if you're saying God's not doing condemnation, God's not doing guilt trips, God's not doing, uh, you know, making you feel guilty, then how is God going to work with you to change? And I said, well, he's a God of love. You can actually change because you love. And then later on, the God showed me the difference between condemnation, which he was, he called it preaching, but really it was just condemnation. The whole service was condemnation. And uh, guilt trips is what he was doing. And so that wasn't working. We liked the guy, but, but the people over him said, we don't know exactly what it is, but... I can't, they said they couldn't put their finger on it. And I said, well, what it is, is the enemy is talking to him, guilt and condemnation, worry and anxiety. So that's what he is calling preaching, because that's all that's inside of him is guilt, anxiety, you know, things like that, because that's what he's listening to. What is that? That's religion. Religion 
is always telling you that God is punishing. See, not discipline. Punishing. You're being punished because you didn't do this. You're being punished. You're sick because you didn't do that. You're being punished. Uh, you're broke, busted, disgusted because there's a punishment. And you look back in church history, my goodness, uh, the churches, what they called churches, they was putting people in boxes and buried them under the ground and hawk. Why are they in alive? You know, why? Because that was what they was listening to. The hierarchy was listening to guilt and condemnation, so they was just spewing it out on everybody else. Well, guess what? That's not of God. See, I was talking to a lady uh, north of town, and she came out there with her husband. We just all visited. She said, well, I just came from church, and... Uh, Boy, they really beat me up good today. No. No, 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 no. If, you, if you're doing something like that, don't walk. Run from that place. <laughs> Run. That is not what God is saying about, you know, they're calling it, you're getting under conviction. No, it's condemnation. Condemnation will kill you. That's why people want to commit suicide. Is because of guilt, condemnation, anxiety. It just gets so built up on them they can't get out of it. Well, the way out of it is to yield to... You can say no to it. No, I'm not... No, you, no guilt trips. I'm not going to do anxiety. You can just choose. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to do the Scriptures. I'm going to do the Word. Like this. Thank you, Jesus. I know I got it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the devil. is. That's resisting the devil right there because you're just yielding to what God is saying. Isn't that good? And that's lasting change. Real change. That's conviction. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it just means convince you of whatever it is you're dealing with. He's... He's convincing you of that God's way is greater. You can say, oh yeah, I know that. But it's, you know, it's when you connect with it with your words, that's when the conviction begins to start. You start yielding, see? Conviction just means convincing. So you can, you can, He's convincing you it's way better with God and when it is. So we're going to do a little dividing point here. Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 says godly sorrow, godly repentance leads to salvation. Okay, so this word sorrow is not like a mourning sorrow. Oh my, oh my, oh my. No, 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 no. This word sorrow is the same reference as conviction. A godly conviction is brings to repentance that means change of mind remember remember conviction simply means convincing you of okay so god convincing you of causes repentance that means change of mind brings repentance and leads to salvation that's how you got born again that's how you got born again born again because you know Somebody preached the gospel, like, yeah, I believe that. See, and there's no, I can't find nowhere that Jesus or the word salvation, word salvation means healed, saved, set free, and delivered. Who wouldn't want that? <laughs> Everybody. But what happens is the enemy tries to come in there and put a wedge in there where people think, well, if I go to God, he's going to condemn me. No, he's not in the condemning business. Well, if I really turn to God in this area of my life, and I, the mess, even in the mess, i got to fix this mess, and then I can turn to God. Well, it's like this. Say you had a dirty car. Do you clean your car up before you go to the car wash? No, you go to the car wash, clean the car up. Well, that's the same way with our life. If there's a mess, and we need to be separated from the mess, whatever the mess may be, then we go to the car wash, we go to God, and He cleanses us from all un-messes. Well, see, He cleanses us from it. That's why we go there. If you can change yourself, you don't need Jesus, but you can't change yourself. See, religion is like this. They put so much guilt, condemnation, anxiety, worry, and all that, flames of fire coming up from hell and everything else. 
People don't turn to God because of the flames of fire. It's like this. They don't turn to God because of fire insurance keeps them from going to hell. No, they turn to God because of the love of God. Because of the love of God. Now, there may be people that get, you know, flames of fire mentality and turn to God, but if they stay with God after they initially turn to God, it's because of the love of God should have broadened their heart. Romans 5.5 5. See, love is stronger than hate. Love is stronger than hate. That's why forgiveness is stronger than bitterness. Now, when you forgive somebody or person, place, or thing or something, that don't mean you're going to go back and, you know, go to hell with them. You're not going to do that. That little relationship may be severed, which is maybe a good thing, especially if it's unhealthy. Well, that would be a, that would be a, a condemnation. They're using condemnation, guilt, anxiety. You're never going to make it. That's what the devil says. Against you, person, place, or thing, well, when that is when that's that's the enemy talking, because God doesn't talk that way, and He even says in His Word He don't talk that way. So let's go a little bit deeper here. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse ten: Godly sorrow, or godly conviction, which means convincing you of godly repentance brings repentance and leads you to salvation without regret. Wow! See. It, it, the devil's the one that puts regret on you. Oh, I wish I would have done this and that wouldn't have happened. I wish I'd have stayed over there and this wouldn't have happened. I wish, I wish, I wish I'd done this. No. It's, it, if it was unhealthy, it's still unhealthy. Don't go back to it. So, regret. But the devil's condemnation tells you that you can never change. You ever heard anybody say that to you? You can never change. Well, where's that coming from? That's not coming from God. That spirit that someone's telling you you can never change, never make it, never going to get out of that mess, that's not from God. Because God is the, in the life-changing, loving business. Okay, so regret. But the devil tells you that you can never change, that you can never get out of that mess, that you blew it. You ever heard that before? From an audible voice? <laughs> Uh, you blew it. I'm done. You ever heard somebody say that? I'm done. Well, with God, He's never done. He, he, even if you was to get away from Him, He's constantly working, trying to get you, trying to work on you to get back in the blessing. That's how much He loves you. I mean, you could be out in the mess, doing the mess, stinking the mess and everything else, living the mess life, thinking you're having a good time. But you know what? He's working. He's working. He's working, working, working to, to help you get back in the blessing, the real life, the real peace and life. He's only going to give you peace in life. He don't give you guilt. He don't give you anxiety. He don't give you worry. He don't give you none of that. He don't give you condemnation. No, that, that, that will cause a wedge in there because God, the true nature of God, just not like that. And uh, I know the religious mind of people are getting their lights turned on now. And they might even feel like they're getting their lights punched out. But that's all right, because we need to grow, see? We need to grow, and the way you grow is to realize when something happens in your life, don't do the guilt thing. You can, do, you can just hold your fingers, not this time. I might have fell for that a lot of times and a lot of years, but I'm not going to worry this time. That's not even me. That's the enemy trying to attack me, the real me is connected to Jesus, and Jesus don't help get in condemnation or anxiety, worry, or even sickness. That's not the real you. Okay, so let's go a little bit deeper here. Makes you start thinking, condemnation, makes you start thinking about death and leads to death. Be sure and don't choose anything but God. What has God given you? What's God given you? God has given, not given you if you can't wait to get out of here. You've heard someone say, oh, I can't wait to get out of here and get to heaven. Now, wait a minute. What about all these people you're supposed to grow in faith and reach? That's your ministry. That's, that's called the ministry of helps. You're helping 
with the gospel to get the gospel out. That is your ministry. You don't have to pray anymore, God, now I don't know what you want me to do. No, that's your ministry. See? You're either going to do you're going to do the praying part. Then there's people that will never see Jesus unless you pray. See? That is your ministry. So the the more you dive into there and pray Ephesians the first chapter, the Ephesians prayers, well, when you do that for people, that's what happens in their life. That's what happened to you. Is what happened to me. That's what's going to happen to all the rest of them that you pray that their eyes of their understanding are being enlightened. So that leads to death. And uh, we don't want to choose anything that God hadn't given us and He hadn't given us death. If you can't wait to get out of here, see, we need to make an adjustment. <laughs> Amen. We need to... We need to uh, do, fulfill everything God's doing us in prayer. You already chose death sentence. Can't wait to get out of here. You already chose the death sentence and may not even realize it. No, we need to choose the life, not the death. Deuteronomy 30 verse 20 says, uh, God has put before us life and death. If you have any trouble, choose life. See, we're to always choose life. Why? Because that's the nature of God that lives inside of us. When we turn to God, we, we develop our relationship with God, whether you're just getting started or whether you've been it for a little while, it, He's always going to give you peace and He's always going to give you life every time you hang out with Him. Every time. Well, every time you hang out with the devil, He's always going to give you not peace and death. He's not going to give you life. Every time. So you can you just, what am I thinking about? Oh, there's so much pressure. I'm going to get out. I, I just got to check out of here. I'm going to commit suicide or whatever. Well, who are you listening to? See, you can give your mind to God too. Not just your heart. But you can give your mind to God too. And that's pleasing to God. That's faith. So we want to choose life every time. You choose life. And uh, the Bible says you have life. And you have a long life. And say he blesses a short life. Well, you know, some people die young. You know, some people die old. It's all in the Lord's hands. Well, show me that in the Bible. Because the Bible says to choose life. It doesn't say to choose death. Choose life and successful life, not a short life, but a defeated life. You can grow every day in faith. I mean, what would you think? Uh, said, well, you can help your family or friends or whatever with this amount. Well, what if you knew that you could help them with this amount to get the gospel out in a greater way? Would you do it? Yeah. Well, the way you start with this amount, like a mustard seed faith, well, that's the way you do it. Well, this is a different way the enemy tries to enter in. He tries to enter. You, you blew it this time. Oh, man, there's no way you can get out of it this time. Well, no. God specializes in blowing it. <laughs> He, he's not the author of them. He don't bring them your way. But uh, you can, the convicting power of God, get on you and around you. And he's going to say, hey, look at this over here. Let's look at the Word of God. Let's, 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 let's. even these videos, I've had people say, I don't know how they got on my uh, computer or on my tablet or phone. I don't know how they got on there. But they come up on there. Well, how does it? God. See? So when the conviction is there, this is the way I can tell I need to watch the videos. Something is saying you don't need to watch them. <laughs> but when I watch them, I'm always blessed by what God is doing, saying, and speaking. We edit them, and I help them edit them too. And so we, I watch them several times, sometimes probably even up to 50 times. But I know it's the anointing. It's not me. I can't take credit for it. But there's a there's a changing and a and a conviction uh, to go with God. The conviction of God bends your will towards God every time. Condemnation tries to bend your will against not doing what God says. See, no convincing. It's just condemnation beating over the head. So we know that's not from God. So you can grow every day in faith and have life and peace every day in any situation. Doesn't matter what the situation is. But it's your choice, not God's. God, He's already given you the tools to have life and peace. But you're the one that has to get into it. 
He's already given you the tools to have life and peace. Uh, what, you, what are you choosing? That's a good question. What are you selling out? Is what you're letting into your head. What are you letting into your head? See? Is it promoting God? Or is it promoting guilt and condemnation? Or anything else? Sickness and disease. If you're selling out to guilt, condemnation, uh, even on other people or even yourself, it's because it's what you're listening to. See, the Bible says if you catch a thief, he has to repay. So this is how you're going to catch a thief like this. So when you catch a thief, guess what? He don't just leave. He has to repay. You want to get paid? You want a payday? You want some paydays that you can go wear what you want, eat what you want, go where you want? Well, that's how you do it. When you catch a thief, you catch him in those thought processes. And when you catch him, what happens is he has to repay sevenfold, the Bible says. So he's trying to steal your life, see, but we're not going to let him do it because God keeps revealing to us and how he does it. See, if you, if you knew, if I knew a thief was going to try to come in that door right there, well, we have these braces on the door. They're not on there right now, but we have these braces for that. It's a metal door. <clears throat> I can put that brace through there, and then I just call the police. He's going to come up and hit that door. He's going to see it ain't moving because it's beyond a deadbolt. It's a brace that goes, braces that go across the door. See? But if you know he's coming, that's the thing. Well, you, you know he's going to come with guilt, condemnation, anxiety, worry, sickness, disease, lack, and all that kind of stuff. Well, guess what? It's a huh. -uh. Yes, let God connect. Let God, let God convict, which leads to life and peace. You can live in life and peace all the time. It's like a, it's like a, a guardrail on both sides, and you're in the middle. You might get a little bit too close to them. That guardrail said, no, you don't go off that cliff. Don't you go that way. No, it's a, it's a safety mechanism. It's safety. When you, when you live with the conviction of God, it's safety. It's a safe place. It's not a bad place. Uh, condemnation on other people or even yourself because that's what you're listening to. But you can sell out to life and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what you're connecting and Renewing your mind with life and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Isn't that good? Just go a little bit deeper here. Uh, you see, your life is not your own. No, you gave your life to Jesus. So now we've got to do it His way. The old life is trying to do the guilt, condemnation. But you're dead to that. That's not you anymore. That's not you. Uh, people may see changes. You may not, but you just know you're not going to do guilt and condemnation no more. So when you talk to someone, uh, uh, present words to somebody, pre present something to them, they're going to notice there's a change there. Now they're going to try to relate to the. They're going to try to relate to you the way you used to be, but that's not the real you. See, even family members, friends, sometimes old friends, old family members that hadn't seen you in a while, well, they don't know you've advanced in the anointing. They don't know that you've grown in faith. They don't know it. So they're going to try to relate to you the way you used to be. But the used to be is dead. We're living in the conviction of God now. And that always is that he's, well, he's, he's called conviction is also connecting us with, connecting us with the good stuff of God. Amen. So uh, live long, live strong. That's God's will for everybody. First, you don't ever have to wonder, God, you want me to live short or you want me to live long? No, he wants you to live a long, successful life. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nineteen through twenty says that uh, about your life is not your own. And then Ephesians six three says that God's will for everybody on this planet is that you live long, you live strong. That and that's those things may go that things may go well with you. So it's not God's bringing the mess. It's not God killing people. It's not God uh, taking success away from people. But well, why do some people don't have success then? Why does they have short life then? And why 
uh, do they have mess then? Because they don't know they're not supposed to. They think it's God doing it. So if you think it's God doing it, you're not going to pray against God. They don't know they can say stop to the enemy. They don't know that. Stop in the name of Jesus. We're not going to do the short life. We're not going to do the unsuccessful life. We're not going to do the sick life. We're not going to, you can just say stop and start doing the scriptures. What's that mean? That means you got on some good conviction. See? Conviction. Good stuff. Connecting with the good stuff. So Ephesians 6 3 says, That you may live long and strong, and that things may go well with you. That's God's will. If it's not, then push against it. Get some gumption about you. Push against it. If it's not, and God's not the problem, the enemy's the one trying to enter in. Go well with you that you may have a long, successful life here on earth. Here on earth. Days of heaven on earth. Okay, the Apostle Paul uh, thought himself happy. What? The Apostle Paul in Acts 26.2 says, The Apostle Paul thought himself happy. Are you thinking yourself sad? <laughs> Are you thinking yourself happy? Are you thinking yourself depressed? Are you thinking yourself broke, busted, disgusted? Are you thinking yourself healed, saved, set free, and delivered? So you can use your mind as a weapon against the enemy. The Apostle Paul taught, he thought, he said himself, happy. Acts 26.2, he thought himself happy. Wow, he thought himself happy. He didn't say, now God came down and corrected my mind. No, he didn't say that. He said he thought himself happy. Acts 26, 2. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Proverbs 17, 22. What's a merry heart do? Well, well, I know, but I just don't feel like doing that. That's because you're giving your mind to the enemy forces. Now, you can thank yourself happy. You can get yourself over. And I remember one time I was, was down in Dewar. I had a Bible study down there. And usually the room was full of people. And uh, what went down there with a van, wasn't my van, I just drove it and people in it and other people was there waiting on us. And we were sitting in the room with the, with the, with the Bible study. And uh, I said, think of 10 things, think of 10 things that are good in your life. One lady, she, she says, I can't think of nothing. I said, I bet you can think 10 things that are bad. She said, oh, yeah, just like that. Well, see, she's given herself over to the dark side of life. She didn't even realize it. I said, well, let's prime the pump a little bit. I said, are you saved? She said, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm saved. There's one. Uh, are you filled with the Spirit? Speak in tongues? Oh, yeah, well, there's two. Have you ever been healed by God? Oh, yeah, He healed my arm. I had pins in it, and God straightened it out in her leg. There's three. And then she just started naming stuff. Oh, they protected my children. They saved me from a car wreck. And money came when it looked like we didn't even have any money. And then food came and we didn't have any food to eat. And we just sat down at the table and prayed. And somebody showed up and brought food. And, and, and then she went past 10. Then she went to 10. Then she went to 20. Then she went to 30. Then she couldn't stop. Why? Because she got over on the light side of life. She got over in the life and peace. And then that's all she could think about. She couldn't think about. Then I said, now think about something. Uh, one thing uh, what was, went bad. So I couldn't think about it. Before, it's all she could think about. See, you're the one that can think yourself happy. Or you can thank yourself depressed. You can thank yourself I'm not interested. You can thank yourself into it. See, You can become critical of other people. They should have said it this way or done it this way. I've done it that way. Whatever. So that's probably the very message that you need right there. You start coming critical. See, critical is where you get the word condemnation. That's a result. See, the enemy becomes critical. Critical, critical. Of course, he says it's God. But it's not God because God's not critical of you. Uh, God's very compassionate about you. Amen. 
So a merry heart does like a medicine. Uh, Proverbs 17, 22. 16 times in Philippians, uh, rejoice. Ha, ha, ha. 16 times in those verses of Scripture, uh, it says rejoice and be happy. Wow. 16 times. Well, I'm waiting on God to give me happiness. No, you got to yield to it. He's not gonna come. He's not gonna come in your head and fix your head. You, he, he's giving you the tools to fix your head. He's giving you the tools to fix your heart. But you're still the one that has to confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart. He's not gonna come down here and make you do it. No, you have to yield. Yield means stop, look, and listen, and say. Okay. So a merry heart does good like a medicine. Be anxious for nothing. Philippians 6, Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing. You'll catch yourself feeling kind of weird and kind of anxious. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? That's a good thing. That's a good time to say, you know what? God is good. What are you doing? You're thinking yourself happy. God is good. Ha, ha, ha. What are you doing? You're thinking yourself happy. You're staying over on God's side. That's faith. That's what faith does. It's not just, oh, I have faith. Well, is it changing your mind? No, no, I have faith, though. You're not even in hope. <laughs> if you're worry warden, you're not even in hope. Because hope gets you over into faith. So start in hope again. Think yourself happy, then stay over on that side. And don't worry, the devil's faithful. He'll show up again, try to mess you up. But we're going to mess him up. Because we can haw haw longer than he can poke at you with the anxiety and cares and worries. So be anxious for nothing. Uh, Philippians Four, six if you're taking notes as in it in uh, Matthew 6 31 says take no thought saying a messed up thought comes don't say it and now you know how to quit thinking about it see oh I can't I can't quit thinking about that something bad's gonna happen I quit that's the devil John 10 10 it's wishing wishing something bad and you don't realize it See, that's a religious state of mind or even a devil's state of mind. They're kind of the same thing. And so what do you do? Well, you, you just say, no, I'm not going to do that. Take no thought saying. <clears throat> well, then when you get over on the light side of life, the God side of life, then you can take a scripture saying. See, how do you not take a thought saying? You take a scripture saying. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. See, that's a scripture saying instead of taking no thought saying. You can, it's all right to take scripture saying. Okay, so uh, the, uh, though the earth be removed, I will not fear. Wow. I mean, you get up, you go outside to check on the dog or you go outside to see what's going on and the earth is gone. All the cars are gone. All the houses are gone. The earth is removed, and you don't even worry about it. You just turn back around and drink your Dr. Pepper or drink your coffee or have your little snack. <laughs> That's power, brother and sister. That's when you know you're walking in power. Why? Because you're not taking no care. Well, even though the earth be removed, you know what? God's still God. He don't ever change. God's still God. And He don't never change even though the earth be removed. Psalms 46 in verse 2. Therefore I will not fear even though the earth is gone. Even though the apocalypse shows up or whatever. It don't matter. God's still God. Psalms 91 will still work. Isaiah 53, 5 will still work. Deuteronomy 8, 18 will still work. Amen. Amen. Psalms 46, 2. Therefore, I won't fear even though the whole earth is removed. See, the earth may fall apart, but I'm not going to fall apart. Hello? The earth may fall apart, but I'm not going to fall apart. The earth may fall apart. The whole world around me, family included, and everybody else may fall apart, but I'm not falling apart. Why? Because we're connected to God and God don't ever change. The scriptures will work whether it's good weather or bad weather. The scriptures will work 
whether it's a, there's like a good day or a bad day, you can change it just like that by your mindset, by your mentality. So you have to practice that, of course, and not just practice, but just do it. A doer of the word. So, uh, yeah, you go outside and the whole earth is gone. You said, mm, let's go back inside and enjoy your life. Enjoy your time with God. Ha, ha, ha. Amen. You have a great one. I'm glad you enjoyed Bible school. And we'll see you on Friday. Have a great one. God bless.